I got super f bored in the office and decided to chase a wild idea. What happens when you expose a resin print to fire or extreme heat? Does it catch fire? Does it explode? Or does it be disappointing and do nothing at all? Well, you're going to find out in this episode. My name's Yasu. I run a little 3D print prop shop called Hero Creations, where I make costumes, props, and other replicas from your favorite movies, television shows, and video games. And occasionally, I have delusions of grandeur of being a pyromaniac. Not really. Anyways, let's get into the episode. So I've read a lot of different arguments and kind of questions on the various Facebook groups and forums I hang out in, and there isn't really a clear, any information on really what happens to res and prints when it's heated up. So I decided to take it upon myself, being the, uh, the troubleshooter, the problem solver that I am, to try and see if I could get some more data points for you all and myself to chew on. So first things first, safety is a priority. I need to iterate, do not try this at home. I did this in a relatively isolated area, outside, on pavement or blacktop, away from people. I made sure I had the proper personal protective gear, you know, respirator, safety goggles, et cetera, et cetera. I also made sure I had a fire extinguisher or two handy and nearby. I also made sure to consult the manufacturer resin MSDS documents to see if they had any guidance or information as to whether the materials used in the resins, the chemicals, if you will, have any flammability ratings. None of them did, or we wouldn't be filming this video. So that's my statement on safety and my disclaimer of please don't try this at home. Because after all, trying to set chemicals on fire is generally not a great idea unless you know what you're doing. So anyways, here goes the findings I had and some of the commentary I had. And here's a sad pile of resin print fails that I'm using for this little test. Using resins such as Sarai Tech Blue, Esun resins, and a random resin from Saint Smart. So first up, we have Sarai Tech Blue, and we have me here showing off the durability of this stuff, even though it's sat in the sun and in a box for a long time. I can drop it from, well, my height to the floor, a very hard concrete floor, and no shattering, no breaking, super tough stuff. So the first test I wanted to run through was to use a very high-powered heat gun, um, similar to what you use in a shipping facility for a shrink wrap, or um, I imagine the temperatures are actually hot enough, I have not tried it, to um, reflow or um, you know, use in soldering um, SMDs. So this particular heat gun has a maximum rated temperature of 1,100 degrees Fahrenheit, or 593 degrees Celsius. So pretty hot. So immediately after I applied all that heat to it, I did another drop test. Interestingly enough, I'm not sure if you can see it or hear it in this particular video, but it actually made the um, the Sarai Tech print much more rubbery. So it didn't really bounce and have this cl uh, clean clattering noise when it dropped, but rather it was like a dull thud. And you can definitely tell as I started kind of moving and trying to bend, it made the uh, Sarai Tech resin very flexible when it was hot, but a heck of a lot more brittle. So as soon as it reached a certain point, it just started to tear and break. To take it to the next level, I decided to take another Sarai Tech Blue uh, print and this time use a butane powered cooking torch that I normally use to burn PLA and ABS out of my FDM nozzles, but it was hot enough to reach roughly 2000 degrees Fahrenheit or roughly 1000-ish degrees Celsius. So pretty much as hot as I was willing to be comfortable with trying out and using the tools I had on hand. So applying a direct flame was definitely interesting, but 
ultimately pretty underwhelming. did eventually sort of catch, they were pretty weak and eventually died out on their own as long as I wasn't applying a consistent hot butane powered flame to it. In the end, the print was pretty charred and very, very brittle, exhibiting none of the bendy, flexible characteristics that the heat gun part had shown. Next up was the acrylate based resins, namely the Eson and Saint Smart resins uh, that I had on hand. Heat gunning them really didn't do anything to the parts. Um, nothing really changed. It was, wasn't any more flexible or different like the Sriatec resins. So I decided to jump into showing you what happens when you try to light a acrylate based resin print on fire. So in the end, it was uh, pretty underwhelming since most things charred. Some of the prints, as you could see, sort of caught fire, but they never really ignited and was kind of sustainable, so... For the most part, I think resin prints are pretty safe in terms of flammability unless you're applying an extremely hot or uh, intense flame, like a butane flame, to the print directly at a close range. Anything else, like a match or a lighter, probably isn't going to do much more than just char the print and make it a bit brittle. So. As you can see, the results were kind of underwhelming, which is kind of a good thing because if things really did seriously catch fire or explode, that probably would be a bad thing and not something I'd want to have resin prints made of. But the fact that it's relatively inert and just gets brittle is probably a pretty good outcome in this particular circumstance, even if it's a bit disappointing and doesn't make for great YouTube. Hope you found this video interesting, educational, adding to the data points of our collective knowledge of resin printing. My name's Yasu. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video interesting and you want to see more like it, you should totally hit that subscribe button and knock that notification bell while you're at it because notification bell means you get to see more of my videos. Not hitting it means you don't get to see them. You won't get notified when I put up anything new. And believe me, I got some exciting, cool stuff coming up, like an end of three extension tutorial, as well as some new prop builds. And of course, lots of resin prints. 2020 is the year of resin for me. If you like this video and you want more people to see it, feel free to hit that like button because hitting that like button tells the YouTube algorithm that more people should see this and they should share it to more people. So that really helps me grow the channel. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna see you in the next video. I've been in your world.